What is all this about Twitter? Well, very simple. Twitter is basically microblogging. Soundbite information. It's usually made up of user-generated links, unless you're doing the aforementioned on having a bath. And it could end up being the biggest search engine in the world within five years, possibly. Is it going to be the next Facebook? Is it going to be the next Google? We don't know. It's certainly a stepping stone to something else. A lot of people might be following their favourite celebrities. Who's following a celebrity? Come on, somebody must be. <laughs> Who's your favourite Twitter celebrity? Stephen Fry. There you go. Bad of being. Very famous. And also the great thing with Stephen Fry is if he mentions someone on Twitter, like a website, they get 20,000 people go there straight away. So you obviously want to get Stephen Fry to talk to you. So times have changed. Here we go. Uh, in the beginning, there was a carrier pigeon. And information kind of got lost in translation. Oh. Now, of course, you can do a Twitter and you can reach the entire planet, basically. So, very powerful technology. 200 million active users in the world, generating 65 million tweets a day. And there's about 800,000 searches every day for keywords and things that people are interested in. Does anyone know how Twitter first came about? It was text messaging, SMS. It's basically a service where people could send a tweet, do a tweet online and it would be text message to people that, that subscri subscribe to it. And you can still use it for that now. So very useful if you're a big company, lots of people out on the road, you do one tweet and you could text message it to everybody. So email, emailing will be extinct within the decade because people are getting so used. Certainly the younger generation, whoever, that, whoever the younger generation are, are now getting used to instant messaging on their Blackberries. So email is going to end up being a little bit like writing a letter and posting it one day. And I don't know about you, but I find I can, uh, I can have a, very, a dialogue with someone and end up having uh, you know, a dozen backwards and forwards emails for something that could have been resolved a lot quicker, maybe through instant messaging. So Twitter's obviously part of the mix. So some of the things I'm just going to run through today, very briefly about setting up Twitter, messaging, trending, lists, Rock Melt, Tweet Adder and Tweet Deck. I'm just going to kind of go through these in various forms. This is the online Twitter page. Might look a little bit bamboo. I'm going to see you looking a bit worried there. Um, it's actually very simple. Here, followers and following. So I could be following people who are putting their own messages online. This is the box, what's happening. In that box is where I type the message that <coughs> everyone who's following me will see. And here I can see what people are saying that I'm following. So that's the basics. Has a section for trends where it will tell me what the hot trends are, what the hot topics are on Twitter at the moment. And you can choose by area. So here I've got London. So loose women. Don't quite know why the loose women TV show was on there, but obviously it was a hot trend. Um, when Caroline Lucas was on Question Time recently, she was one of the top tweet, tweet, tweeted names in the country at the time. So I don't know how many people that was, but it was obviously quite a lot. That's a good question. Yes. Like the amount of people who are tweeting about it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and of course, Twitter has its very own language, which all looks very complicated again. It's actually very simple. We can tell the tweeters what the key words, what the key messages are, by putting a little hash sign in front, which will then make it go blue. And that makes it a key word. So that increases its relevance if people are searching. If you as an organization want to see who's tweeting about you, these are also used if you have an actual, if there's an actual event on, you might pick a hashtag for it. So Copenhagen, COP16, hashtag COP16. Green Party have just brought out the new election broadcast. It's, about, it's called No Joke. So the hash No Joke is kind of the, one of the keywords they're using. BBC are putting these on the end of questions. So in America, they're actually putting the hashtag over the, in the bottom right corner of the picture, you know, all these TV shows and sets often have the logos in, they're actually putting the hashtag name on over, superimposed. So in the States, it's a lot bigger than here. BBC have only just started doing it. And you can also retweet content. So if someone puts something up I like and I want all the people following me to see it, I can retweet it. You can also send direct messages to people with a very simple syntax uh, on there. No, no guarantee Stephen Fry is going to answer. This is a graph that shows the spread of a viral video and the most popular ways that gets spread. Facebook, not surprisingly, is the top way of spreading a viral video because people embed it, etc. Email is second and Twitter comes third. So it's in the top three, Twitter, even videos. Mostly, though, the content that gets spread the most on Twitter is information-based rather than video-based. That, that's an absolute fact. 
Um, people are less likely to click through to a video via Twitter for whatever reason than they do, obviously, if it's embedded in Facebook, probably because they get it's easier. And then there's some other bookmarking things you might also want to look at that are places you should be putting your content. So, a few celebrities, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Alan Carr, Al Gore, John Cleese, a few of my favourites. John Cleese. Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's telling me here how his plane had an emergency landing, but he's okay now. I'm very pleased to hear that, Arnold. <laughs> Alan Carr. Now, Alan Carr uses Twitter in a very interesting way. When there's a television show like Pop Idol or X Factor, he will be tweeting live his commentary. And what a lot of younger people, or probably older people too, have set up is all his tweets will be sent to their phone. So they'll be watching telly, and they'll be getting Alan Carr's own commentary sent to their mobile phone. So he's adding a whole dimen a new dimension to television. So it's not just a one-way street now. Of course, people can get into a lot of trouble with Twitter too. We can think about a few instances. This one of Tory councillors suggesting someone be stoned to death. But hey, don't tell Amnesty, it will probably be okay. So he got into a lot of trouble. He probably got fired. Um, so you do have to be a bit careful what you're putting on there. I'm sure none of you lovely people would even think about writing something like that. You probably wouldn't even think it, let alone write it. Barack Obama, very well-known Twitter, Twitterer. He's now obviously so important that he has his own person who does the tweeting. Um, he's got 6.8 million followers. But good news is Lady Gaga has actually got 8.6 million followers. So Lady Gaga is actually the number one person on Twitter, followed by Justin Bieber and Barack Obama is third. This is probably a bit worrying, but these are kind of the audience that we're... This is the audience that we're all trying to actually engage with, quite clearly, because I find in my work with the Green Party and things that we're talking to preaching to the converted a lot of the time already. So these are the people we want to try and reach, and it's going to be by doing sticky content. And we've also had a worldwide... We actually have a worldwide celebrity who was created by Twitter. Anyone think who that is? Harris. Hmm? Whatever his name is, so not Paris, Perez. Perez, yeah, I'm thinking a bit close to home. Yes, it's our very good friend Subo. The reason Twitter made Subo is actually very simple. When she was on that TV show, the famous clip that went on YouTube, which has been watched hundreds of millions of times, Demi Moore found out about it and she, was wa and she watched it and she tweeted about it. Now, Demi Moore is one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest names, uh, celebrities in the States, that on all the media for her. So they all picked up on the Subo story. Uh, and that's kind of how the Subo phenomenon took off outside England. And actually, she had the biggest selling album in the world, her first album, which is very worrying. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, Twitter has been used to great effect in disaster relief, generating awareness. In countries where all the phone lines have been smashed or broken, they use Twitter to send photos and reports. So, you know, when these things happened in the Philippines and places like that, we were able to see stuff coming out of there immediately because people were using Twitter and mobile technology in general to put information out there. So here I can see in my stream all the people that I'm following who are tweeting. So there's a big number because I've got, I'm following 1,600 people. So obviously I'm only ever going to get a snapshot of what's going on um, unless I'm more specific about the people I want to follow. And I'm going to show you in a minute how you can put people into lists of people. So you're only, you know, you could obviously, I could obviously go down here pretty much forever because there's so many people tweeting. And I might want to break the content down a bit more. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. Here we've got, just so you know, you've got a whole bunch of stuff. You've got mentions, retweets, searches. So you can do searches. You can, re you can find out where you've been mentioned. Tweets, there you go. So I can find out where Ecotube, my website's being mentioned by looking there. So I can see this person spread some of my content around. So the point is it's very trackable. And then you can break, put lists, your own lists of people together from within your feed. So. If there are groups of people I just want to target one in groups, I can add them to a bespoke list, and then I can just send messages to the, all the people in the bespoke list. Um, and that's also, I'm going to show you a minute, a way of other people generate lists as well, and they make them available on the internet. So I can then pick someone else's list up and start following all the people in, in the list that they've put forwards. So it's all very easy ways of getting lots of people that are relevant for researching and people you might want to push to. I use this mostly for pushing my video links 
um, and occasionally I'll dip into it if I'm looking for some new video content or I'll do a more specialized search because with Twitter I can search for keywords so I can find out if I wanted climate change, new, new green videos, I might do a search for green videos and the software I'm going to show you in a minute will allow me to see and follow all the people who are talking about green videos or climate change, whatever the keyword is. So it's actually pretty straightforward to find the right people. Um, I would say in terms of the number of people, in order to get people to follow me, I have to start following them. And I would say the conversion rate of people that follow me back is maybe 20%. Maybe more, depending how uh, relevant they are to what I'm saying and vice versa. And again, I'm going to show you some software in a minute. You can, all the people who aren't following me back, I can remove them. So I can build up my following list and then any of the ones I've started following, if they're not following me back, I can just take them off. So you make sure you've got completely relevant groups of people. No, that's not going to be very uh, specific for what you do here because I, from what I can tell you're mostly pushing content and you, you do want to do a bit more interacting but actually I think it's probably more for driving people to your content. Obviously a lot of it's driving traffic to another website so people are going for seeing a tweet, go and see Bill Clinton's global disaster relief page. It's driving people to different places and it's trackable. If you're sending people to other locations it's trackable. And again, I'm going to show you that in a minute. This is a very successful campaign, End Malaria. Um, incredibly, this reached 147 million people. And it was a massive social media campaign. Ashton Kushner, Demi Moore's boyfriend, was something to do with that. This is called Twit Change. And it's basically a global celebrity auction where you can bid to be retweeted, followed or mentioned by a celebrity of your choice. And this raised half a million dollars quite incredibly. So I would say that's quite an interesting idea. It had 178 celebrities, 750 auctions, and the Twitch Twit Change site got over 35 million web hits in four weeks. Now that's a pure Twitter campaign. Most of them are not purely Twitter. Twitter is usually going to just be part of the mix, unless you're very clever and you come up with a brilliant idea like this. Hi, I'm Eva Longoria. Thank you for checking out our new celebrity auction here at twitchange.com where we are trying to change the world one tweet at a time. Unlike normal celebrity auctions where you can buy memorabilia or a bid on an autographed photo, we are auctioning off two very cool things. One, the chance to be followed by your favorite celebrity on Twitter, and two, the chance to receive a special tweet by your favorite celebrity on Twitter. It's never been done before. We have everyone participating, celebrities from entertainment, athletes, actors, musicians, business people, techies, everyone is on board just for you. And all of the proceeds are going to build a home and school for special needs kids in Haiti. So starting September 15th, you will have 10 days to bid on your favorite celebrity. Help us make a difference in the lives of these kids in Haiti. It's a lot of fun and the celebrities are waiting to tweet you.